other than sunlight, which can be fatal to them. There are very few ways in which to conquer a vampire. However, various legends and reference books about these creatures of the night, as well as my own experiments, have affirmed the following. Firstly, vampires detest the smell of garlic. This preventative measure, used in a good number of regions subject to the depredation of these creatures, is omnipresent in the folklore of these aforementioned regions. Secondly, vampires cannot endure the fact that they cannot see their reflection in a mirror. This optical effect, which I feel confident I can witness, strikes them like a club with the vacuity and aberrance of their existence. Thirdly, some storytellers mention an irrational fear of running water, as well as a specific vulnerability to silver bullets. I have not been able to test and validate these theses. In fact, during the half a lifetime that I have dedicated to the research and annihilation of these creatures, I have only had as true recourse three weapons which have proven decisive. The Crucifix Foremost Brandished with conviction, it fights off these creatures and prevents for a moment all attacks from them. Next, holy water. It serves to inflict wounds on the creature because it burns its flesh like acid. Lastly, a wooden stake is the final instrument of destruction. After having discovered the sanctuary of the enemy, one must profit from its damned slumber in order to strike with the greatest force into the beating heart of Professor, it's me. It's Maria, your lodger. Professor, there's a letter here. Can you hear me? Yes, yes. Slide it under the door. Can I get you anything, Professor? Something to eat, perhaps? Mm. What? No. No, thank you, Maria. But, Professor, it's been four days now that you haven't been outside, is it? Maria, I am trying to work. Leave me in peace. My friend, how can I allow you to leave? And what will become of you? I should have been in your place in this cursed castle and been destroyed by the one whom I have chased for years. You, you've had Mina, poor thing. What grief I will cause when I shall tell her the news. There isn't a moment to lose. We must inform Mina. She is in grave danger. In, Professor. I am pleased to see you. Please excuse the disorder in my attire, but I haven't had the strength to attend to the housekeeping this morning. But what is going on, Mina? And where is your servant? Jenny is absent. She... she is with her sister. My God, I am at a loss for words. We found her poor sister yesterday, dead. An atrocious crime. Today's newspapers gives the heinous details. The police came here to break the news to Jenny. She was shocked and had to go to the police station to identify her sister. What a tragedy! She was my junior by three years and now she's dead! But what a paltry hostess I am! To what pleasure do I owe your visit? Have you received news of Jonathan? Ah, not at the moment. I came to see if all was well. Jonathan repeatedly insisted I take care of you. I reckoned. Could I take you for a stroll in the park, perhaps? Oh, nothing would give me greater pleasure. I must alter my thoughts. Give me a few moments in order to ready myself. I did not have the courage to break the sad news to her. But it must be done sooner or later. What could have happened to this poor young girl? Mina told me that it was mentioned in the papers. Damnation! This cannot be a coincidence. Harker's letter spoke of his host's interest in London. I must get to the bottom of this. It is a photograph of Harker. Mina is very much in love with him. This pile of newspapers must have belonged to Harker. He kept them to help him in his 
hunt. Perhaps I will find the article to which the News Times made reference today. These articles surely contain some clues which will permit me to discover where the perpetrator of these wrongdoings has taken refuge. Vampires possess numerous powers, such as uncommon physical capabilities and the ability to transform into bats. Harker's map of London, quite detailed. These articles surely contain some clues which will permit me to discover where the perpetrator of these wrongdoings has taken refuge. Here is the place where this young religious woman was attacked by this demon. And that's the direction which the aggressor took to escape. Here is the Melford's building. And that's the direction which the aggressor took to escape. That's where the corpse of Jenny's young sister was discovered. And that's the direction which the aggressor took to escape. Ah, here is the spot where McAllister was found lying under a porte cochere. And that's the direction which the aggressor took to escape. All of these paths cross at a point, Godalming Manor, next to Bloomsbury Cemetery. I must get there as soon as possible while it is still day. The park and Mina will wait. My dear child, I had forgotten some urgent business that calls me elsewhere in London. We aren't going to the park. It is only postponed for the time being. But I would like you to do something for me. Could you please find me a dozen bulbs of garlic from one of the markets? Bring them here and hang them near the windows. Near the windows? Ah, yes. I do not have the time to explain it to you, but you must do this for me. And if a stranger comes to see you and claims to be here on my behalf, or that of Jonathan, do not, under any circumstance, let them in. You are alarming me, Professor. Should I be worried? No, it is nothing. At least, I think not. All will be well. I shall return this evening, and we shall dine together, if I am still alive. Godalming Manor. How can I be of service? Hello, I am Professor Ernesto Slavakopit from the Agricultural University of New Hampstead, connected to the Center for Cheese Proficiency. I have just retired and have been looking in London for a quiet new residence that is large enough to shelter my expansive research materials. Now your dwelling, or rather that of your employer, corresponds exactly with what I am looking for. Will you announce me so that he and I can discuss a potential offer? The master I and he told me. He told you what? What? Your master, what did he tell you? Certainly to welcome visitors with politeness during his absence and allow them to wait in the lounge. Isn't that correct? The master told me to crush the big flies that buzz about here and bother his sleep. He even told me I could eat him if I wanted to. Bother his sleep. Interesting. I must find a way to enter this location 